On September 16, 2022, a high school teacher gave her students a simple classroom task with the expectation of them following directions and continuing her lesson. Rather than follow the directions, the students proceeded to ignore the classroom rules and procedures, disrupting her lecture. This incident prompted an emotional and uncensored response from the instructor. This occurrence has also been the top subject for the past week, and today I have the privilege of interviewing this guest. For the purpose of the ongoing investigation, she will remain anonymous. So, welcome to the show. I am happy to have you. How have you been? I've definitely been better, but thank you for having me. Yeah, no uh, no problem. I um, I wanted to take the opportunity, and thank you for accepting, because I, um, I've always been of the belief that there are always three sides to a story. There's the one side, the other side, and then there's the truth. And I always feel that people should have um, the opportunity to say their side of the story. And so thank you um, for coming on. Now, let's, um, let's jump straight in. How long, how long have you been teaching? Since 2015. Okay. And what school did you attend? Like, where did you get your degree in? I started at Albany State University majoring in mathematics. I transferred to Georgia State University to finish my bachelor's degree. I have a master's degree in educational research. I have a master's degree in mathematics education, and I'm currently working on my educational specialist degree in secondary mathematics curriculum. Okay, so that's more than most of us can say, but I'm not going to blast myself out here. Um, (laughs) Any additional credentials that you've amassed since teaching? Other than my professional teaching certificate, I've earned some online certifications with Google Education and Microsoft Education. Okay. All right. Cool. So clearly you know what you're doing. (laughs) Um, So now to the conflict at hand. I uh, I have the audio for the audience. I want everybody to take a listen just in case they're unfamiliar with the story. And we'll continue from there. DeKalb school officials send a teacher home after a saucy exchange with her student surfaces. The math teacher got fed up and hurled profanity at ninth graders, and the exchange is on tape. Fox Vice More Stiggs has the audio and reaction from a parent of a pupil in that class. In the recording, clearly you're going to hear this teacher is upset. What got her that way? Well, the pace and the attention that her ninth graders gave to the topic. How a Miller Grove High instructor interacted with students landed her in timeout. She did not know a cell phone captured the moment. Y'all had so much to say about five minutes ago. Now it's quiet as hell. I want to get answer. What is y'all's problem about doing something very simple? The instructor, who's not being named pending an internal investigation, had heard too many students doing something other than the assignment she'd given them. You learn how to get your sh- and sit back down. We can practice it all day long. Do you want to practice it now so y'all want to act like kindergartens? No. I've never in my life seen such foolishness. So let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm no longer in the mood to teach. You've wasted my time. I was devastated. I, I was completely floored. A parent who has a ninth grader in the class is empathetic to a point. If you feel like you are about to lose it, you run the classroom. You have an opportunity to stop yourself. And if you can't gather yourself outside, then you need to call somebody and say, hey, somebody need to come to this classroom because I can't take it anymore. The instructor will not have any more classes for a while. She's on administrative leave. How did that bizarre exchange end? Well, listen. Get out of my classroom. You can go play in the middle of rush hour traffic at this point as long as you are not in here. Beyond the profanity, the parent told me what offended her was the remark about the students going out to play in rush hour traffic as long as they got out of her classroom. We trust the annoyed instructor was simply using sarcasm. From DeKalb County, I'm Morse Diggs, Fox 5 News. So... Mm-hmm. We just heard the tape and everything. Take us back to that moment. Like, what happened that day that led up to that moment? Um, I just want to make it very clear that it wasn't just the 
events of that day. This was a class that I had been struggling with since the start of the um, school year. Mm, okay. So I do think what you are hearing is a buildup of things. So I do want to let the people know that this wasn't just an isolated incident that I just blew up at this one thing. Okay. Um, but um, how do I say my frustrations? What most people picture when they think of a math teacher is a teacher, you get up on the board, you work a couple examples, and the kids do a worksheet, right? Gotcha. Okay. I'm not that teacher. (laughs) Okay. I'm not that kind of teacher. I like to do activities. I like to make things fun. I like to have the kids up and moving about, really incorporating um, just more engaging uh, instructional practices. So the night before, I had stayed up pretty late preparing a fun activity for my kids to do okay. so that they can learn the lesson. And it involved them just getting a dry erase marker and a whiteboard. So like you heard on the uh, recording, I had asked my students to do this. Okay. But rather than do this, I had students in my room blatantly ignoring me. There were private conversations going on. There was students making TikToks and videos in the corner. There was another student who was combing her hair. Another student was eating an entire chicken biscuit um, in my room. So it seems like only a handful of students was actually getting the supplies that I had requested them. And then some of those were throwing the supplies across the room. So I'm having like markers and erasers and big dry erase boards being flung across my classroom. Hmm. So you ask them to get up, get these materials and come back to their seats. Yes. And this is what ensued. Now, are things like this, like, is this a regular occurrence? Like I, I, I'm not sure if it's as bad every day, but you said that you've you've dealt with some things like this before. So are incidents like this like a regular occurrence where they are um, off task for what you asked? Um, yes. Does it always get to this degree? No. Um, like I said, this kind of behavior has been escalating since the start of the school year. But uh, nine times out of ten, my, most of my students are off task. They are engaging in behaviors that I feel are inappropriate or mm-hmm. unacceptable. At the very least, it is just disruptive to the learning environment. And I spend most of the time redirecting my students than actually teaching them. Okay, so let me play Let me play an opposite advocate at this point. Given what you said, um, what about those that say, well, she's the teacher, like she, you know, this is her classroom. If stuff like this happens on a regular basis, you know, people that that would try to lay that at your feet to say, well, since she's the instructor, what has she done about it? Like, how how would you how would you respond to that? Um, I would say that I have done exactly what I was trained to do. I. um implemented several interventions before I've pulled students who I saw were struggling, who I saw were disruptive. I've pulled them and had just one-on-one conversations saying, hey, what's going on? How can we get this together? Do we need to talk about it? Let me know if you need to step out because you're having problems focusing. Mm -hmm. When that didn't work, of course, I contact the parent I would call I would email most of the time I didn't get a response I've issued detentions sometimes they stayed sometimes they didn't I've collected phones as a way to to uh, keep them on task but of course I gave the phone back at the end of class because I Mm. don't want to be in possession of someone's phone someone's personal property and I've even gone so far as written uh, administrative referrals, actually re- referring the student to the administrators. Gotcha. Administrators, excuse me. Okay, so there are several tools that you've used, and you you said something earlier that I think is interesting. Um, it sounds like you have set tools that you can use. Mm-hmm. You deployed those tools, um, and yet uh, this continues to happen. Like one of the things that just caught my attention is uh, you said 
um, that you've had to take phones and you return them at the end of class and everything. I was I was just thinking to myself, uh, how is it that this student even got this recording if you're not supposed to have your phone out during instructional time? Now, albeit, you know, we know that that kids have cell phones, but like like for myself. Uh, when I was in high school, like that was that was something that you 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 didn't do. Like you knew to put your phone away, or in, in my day they were confiscated, and your parents had to come get it. It wasn't a give it back to you the exact same day. And in that in that same sense, you also said that you reached out to parents, mm -hmm. but no one had responded. Now. How often does that happen? Because again, I'm I'm thinking about my own situation now, and I know if my if my parents got called when I was in high school, the return would have been immediate. So, how often do you does it happen where you don't get a response from parents? Almost always. <laughs> um, I, like I said, I've been teaching since 2015, and it's very rare that we will actually get a response to the phone calls and emails that we send home gotcha. and even the ones that we do happen to reach is it, they're just very nonchalant about it okay so it, in that because i you know i have my personal opinions about that about the responsibility of that um but you this audio was recorded. How do you feel about being recorded without your permission? Like, I think this is one of those things, whereas to me, if you had been doing what you were supposed to do, then you wouldn't have had your phone in your hands in the first place to do something exactly. like this. Albeit, you can, I mean, you can, but I, I'm surprised that, you know, parents in situations like this don't say, well, what were you doing with your phone out anyway to, to do this? Why did you have your phone out in class? So how do you feel about being recorded without your permission? I can, I feel it's completely unfair. We have sat, or we as teachers have sat in so many professional developments, so many um, trainings that just blatantly beat us over the head with it. You cannot record a student. You can because, of course, they are minors. You have to have uh, the parents' oh, permission. Okay. Even when I was earning one of my degrees, I had to have submit um, a snippet, a video of my teaching. And even though the camera was completely on me mm -hmm. and you never saw a student in the video, I still had to get the parents' permission just to have the camera in my room because they are under 18. Now, is that same protection for... The teacher, absolutely not. Right, because that, that's what I was about to say. I, albeit I understand, you know, um, parents not being comfortable with their kids being recorded as minors. I definitely get that. I'm a parent myself. Um, but it seems a little one-sided if yeah. I, I think that, you know, when when teachers express that there are certain behaviors happening in the classroom and these things are, you know, a regular occurrence, then – it, it might be time to deploy something like having something there to catch this stuff on camera or to see what the behavior actually is, to analyze what the problems are and see how they can fix it. But from what you said, um, you guys don't have that. So right, our hands are completely tied in that manner. Okay. That's, that's very interesting. It's so funny because we're in a political season right <laughs> now and I, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. That seems something noteworthy uh, for, you know, upper administrations to consider, especially with the level of, you know, uh, with the with the climate that we're in as far as high school is concerned. You know, um, certain incidents that's occurring, the unfortunate shootings at high schools and different things yes. like that. Education like, needs to be a major component of these politicians platform as they are campaigning. But unfortunately, um it just seems America always has other things on their mind than the education of their children and the safety of their children and teachers, for that matter, within the school. Hmm. That's uh, that's an that's an entirely different conversation. I'm gonna have to, that, that, I may have to bring you back. Complete left field for that. <laughs> yeah, I may have to bring you back on that at one point, but. Um, to continue, so like, like detail the conversation. So I'm, I'm assuming this went to your senior administration. Of course, it went to my principal. Okay, so what was the conversation with the the principal? Like, did did this involve the parent and everything as well? Um, 
first, I didn't even know there was a recording to over a week later. So, mm. as you stated, this happened on September 16th. Okay. So, which was a Friday, I believe. Okay. Mind you, I I came to school and I worked the following week. I mm. heard nothing. Okay. Um, Me and the students were back on great um uh, relationship just like we were before i taught like everything was normal or so it seemed oh yeah or so it seemed wow. most of the kids were just as responsive to me as they always are we engaged in activities and lessons and everything like we normally do so to be clear because i want to make sure i'm getting all the details here you said most of the kids and coming back um, were responsive. So when you have occurrences like this, because earlier we talked about this being more so of a regular occurrence, it, this sounds like a set amount of students. Like, are these the same perpetrators all the time? Like, this isn't the entire class. This is yeah, set it's people. Yeah, it's a set um, group, yes. Okay. Um, And then let's not paint a negative picture here. Some of all kids get off task every now and right, then. Right, right, right. That just comes with this territory of teaching teenagers. Of course. But they all need that redirection every now and then. Sometimes it takes um, a little tough love to get them to redirect their behavior. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, um, even though it was unprofessional, it seemed to have worked because when I came in the following week, a lot of them were on their best behavior. So let me let me let's dive into that. And I want to I want to dive into what the conversation was like from the principal's standpoint, too. But you you said you mentioned like that, that tough conversation, saying things in a certain manner. Um the following week, it seemed to have worked yeah. to walk that route. At and least one... for temporarily, the kids, in my opinion, now have I gotten an opportunity to talk to them one-on-one -on -one and personally about the situation? No, because, of course, I was placed on leave. But they were more mindful of their behavior and their actions. They were more engaged. They immediately did what I asked them to do. And it's not like it was very tense in my room. We were still making jokes like we always do. The kids were still having their private conversations like they always do. They was just more mindful that when I called them to attention because mm -hmm. it was time to learn, they did so. So that's, that's something that's interesting to me too because... I, I I respect the fact that you're able to say, hey, it wasn't my best response. Nowhere, I don't think um, even in when I when I first heard this story break, um, that you never said that it was the best way to go about it. You Absolutely never said not. that you weren't Absolutely. wrong for it or anything like that. I think, uh, um, you know, I think essentially you stand by the point that you were making. Yes. But the manner in which it was made, I don't think I heard anything about you ever making an excuse for that, which I think is is awesome because we all, I think that can be understood. We all have uh, bad days. We all have bad situations. I mean, uh, funny enough, to your point about politicians, like we've had politicians in the highest points of office that have made some off the cuff comments, <laughs> and you know they were still able to to ascend to the yeah. place that they were in and yeah. different things like that. And so, let's let's look at it now. What did your what did your principal have to say about this when she heard everything? Well, like I said, it was over a week later when, of course, I was teaching my class like I normally was when my principal came and pulled to me and say, hey, I have a parent here who has a concern. Um, there's a recording of you. And she, she basically told me it's bad. It's mm -hmm. bad. And so I was brought to the principal's office where the parent was waiting and we proceeded to kind of have a talk. And by talk, I mean the parent did most of the talking. Okay. And I could imagine how how that went. Yeah. Um yeah. and and it breeds it, it, it brings about a certain question too because in hearing the audio, um, again to play the opposite opinion of things, as a teacher, like, um, do you have do you have children? Yes, I have a three year old. Okay. So well, I guess that wouldn't be high school, but <laughs> <laughs> Given the situation and the understanding, like with with what you said in the manner that you expressed it in, would you be OK with a teacher addressing your child like that? No, but I think I would still ask some questions. What led to the address? led to that? Because. This is where I feel like I differ because I am a teacher and because I'm 
coming from a old school style of parenting. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I mean when we say old school style. I of definitely do. I there definitely was do. <laughs> um, parents back then really believed in it takes a village to raise a child. Absolutely. And our parents had a much, much stronger relationship with their child's teacher. Absolutely. They would come to curriculum night. They would come and come to open house and every the parent PTA, teacher con- every, every PTA conference. minute. Yeah. Like my parents yeah. stayed at the school. Even the, too. when I was a straight A student, my parents were still contacting my teachers. Mine too. <laughs> so because my parents had a reputation with my teachers, if something like this were to happen, they would have asked the question or two. They would have stopped to say, that's not the teacher I know. What, what happened to led up to this? Because I know her. I've talked with her. Right. I've, um, experienced her lectures and so they would have at least given me the benefit or given the teacher a benefit of the doubt and so I say that's what I was looking for too that I would have wanted the benefit of the doubt right because I was about to ask um, that although it's probably like were you given the benefit of the doubt by the parent that none this okay. none. I was never given an opportunity to explain myself at all even during that uh conference that we had of course she did most of the talking and most of it was um character blaming okay and um and you don't have to go into details I know that it's an ongoing investigation um but as a generic question um do you feel like you got that that benefit of the doubt from your principal? Do you feel like they? You know? uh, yes. yes. Okay. Um, Good. I do understand, like being a principal, you are in a leadership role and Absolutely. can't play sides. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think she did her best to um, be arbitrary, to be arbitrary and mediate the situation, to gotcha. to let the parent be heard and voice her concerns and her frustration and her sadness and her anger, um, while at the same time advocating for me that this is a once instance that I've been teaching for this long and there is nothing in my personnel file. Nothing. That, because this is the first like in, incident I have ever had. Of course, when you are an angry parent, you, you don't hear any of that. Yeah. And and I, you know, and to some degree, I think everyone can understand that in yeah. the heat of the moment. But I, I think that's also the privilege is, uh the privilege of us being adults to, you know, have um, to have that afterthought. Because in, in my opinion, um, one of the things that uh, the mother said um, in the audio that we heard is, you know, take that minute, cool down to yourself so that we can we can facilitate this in a better way. And so I would I would say that all of us have to do that. Mm-hmm. Like if you go. I, I agree. I, I completely agree. But here is where the audio is missing. I let 30 minutes pass. <laughs> I gave my kids two minutes to get their materials. 30 minutes passed because they were so off task and I was trying to get them back off back on task until I got to the point where I just stopped and I observed and I looked at them and I tried to calm down. But the students, they never self-regulated. These got more and more out of control. Gotcha. And she also said, why didn't I go? Why didn't I call someone? Well, no offense, but have you been inside schools lately? There's no one there. Who who am I going to call? See, we are again. missing teachers. We are down teachers. We are down para for paraprofessionals. Yeah. We're down administrators, school nurses. Our we are functioning in schools with the bare minimum of the faculty and staff that is necessary. See, again, that strikes me like I, I already have a very political approach to a lot of things. And again, it, you know, as many issues as there are in the world, when it comes to the education of our children, their safety and a healthy environment to facilitate that in. Again, this sounds like one of those things that need to be before government officials to do some legislation around making sure that's happening and and i'll um I'll, i want to be careful because i know i can go off <laughs> on a tangent but yeah but again we we may have to talk through that um, on another at a different, i'm just at, trying at a to time. paint the picture that i was in um what's the saying between a rock and a hard place and gotcha. in my mind i chose the lesser of two evils gotcha okay so you say what you say you get um the conference with the principal they render what uh, the parent gives her opinion you hear from your principal. What happened after the meeting? Well, in the meeting, we left saying that um, 
she was on um, the parents was going to talk to the child's father and talk to the child because she admitted at that point she hadn't even discussed the matter with the child who was in my class to see how he felt mm, okay was he offended was he hurt um gotcha. we later on found out that he wasn't because he was making a joke of it in school wow. <laughs> yeah okay um Which and we speaks left to the point earlier exactly. of the continuing behavior but go ahead um but we left the meeting saying that we were going to talk about it the next day um, because she works at the parent works at night and needed to get home and get some rest because she had just finished working a shift um, that we were going to move the student to another teacher's class, which I was perfectly fine with. And okay. I, I, I agreed with that. He should be moved um, and that we will discuss further consequences later, okay. maybe the next day. But guess what happened the next day? What? It hit the news. Mm. It hit the news. And from the news came the administrative leave and different things. Absolutely. Of that nature. So okay. I I have no I have no um certainty of how the video got to the news. But what I am certain of is when that meeting occurred with me, the parent and the principal, the news already had the recording. Mm, okay. So, so it, it seems, seems that to me that regardless of what was going to happen in that meeting, the decision had already the decision been made. had already was, been there made. There wasn't going to be any reconciliation. Yes, um, yes. that was there. I that I was you. not going to have the opportunity to correct my mistake on my own. Okay. So after like after effects, how how has this affected? your professional and personal life hmm. professionally i i have never been in this situation before i feel like my reputation was tarnished i feel like um i wasn't given a chance hmm. um because parents talk students talk and everybody now knows my name and it's associated with something like this. So I also feel mm -hmm. like my name was attacked. I feel like my reputation was tarnished mm -hmm. and all of that. Um, do I ever think that I could be the teacher that I once was? No. Wow. Because <laughs> I don't want to sound arrogant or anything, but a lot of people have told me that I am a good teacher. Okay. And I, I thought so, too, that I was a good teacher because I took the time to build relationships with my kids. Right. I care right. about them, which means I showed some type of vulnerability to them. You know, I would show them my mistakes, show them that I'm human. I'm imperfect. I misspell words. I and, mean, this is a know. prime example. I'm, I'm sure there's no child <laughs> out here whose parent right. hasn't said something or done something. Or something that they yeah. didn't mean to their kid. Yeah. But I always yeah. believe, just like you do with your parents, that they may get mad. They may say something. Something that kind of hurts your feelings, but at the end of the day, you believe that they have your best interest in mind. And right. I always assumed my students thought the same thing about me, that I would never do something to intentionally sabotage you, your future and your academic career. Yeah. Yeah. But to have a student record me without my knowledge and use it to bring about some type of humiliation or to get me, quote unquote, un in trouble. Mm -hmm. Either way, the intentions of making the recording were not good. Right. And so now that trust has been broken. I don't think mm -hmm. I could go into my classroom and view students the exact same way. I would view them as some someone that I would have to protect myself from Understood. rather than to help them. Understood. And that's, I guess, with me again, um, because I like to look at all sides of this. Um, I'm a parent. Would I have been a fan of the manner by which it was said? No, but I would have investigated the purpose and yeah. finding out the purpose. That definitely would have been a conversation with my child about their behavior yeah. and the things that merit that. That also would have been, um, we have to take the opportunity to build better relationships, as you yeah. said before, between parents and teachers too. That would have opened the doorway to kind of, you know, Say, you know, where are the similarities in behavior versus home and school? Where are the differences? Like what exactly. what's actually happening here so that we can partner 
um, and 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 help and, and right and work this out together. Let's build yeah. this relationship together so we can better help your child. And we need like we need more teachers like that. Like your your qualifications alone alone speak for itself. The time that we're in, um, the need is great. Um, so to lose teachers of that magnitude, especially over something like this, because I never thought about it that way, you're no longer empowered. You no longer feel empowered exactly. to affect your, your children and right. the authority that exactly. you should. I don't feel empowered. I don't like the video said or the parent on the recording said that you are in control of your classroom. Apparently not. Right. If one student can make a recording of me and completely tear down my character as a teacher, am I in control? Yeah. Yeah. Am I? Well, but teachers have known that for all along. We don't run the classroom. Parents and students do because there are laws and protections for y'all, but there is not one protection on the books for teachers. So like, I, th I think that's, that's a great segue in what you just said. What, what about your fellow teachers? Have they expressed their opinions oh on this because it gosh. sounds like it sounds like they too have been in situations like this they too have experienced um certain things i'm sure that some have even responded in the same manner it just hasn't been yeah it just wasn't on the news <laughs> gotcha gotcha so what what have they you know what has been the the uh, opinion of your fellow teachers i would definitely have to say that the support that I got from my school family was probably the only reason why I was able to get through this as best as I have. Gotcha. The outpouring from them was unimaginable because I'm, I'm that teacher that just, I go to work, I go in my room, teach my kids, go home. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so to see so many um, other teachers to stand up in support of me, to call the district, to write letters wow. and petitions and wow. even start a cash out for me was just I, I never asked for it. And I never wow. thought that would happen. But I was so moved by them. And I think it is because one. um They've all been in my situation. We've all had that mm. tough class. It has been a difficult year for all of us as teachers. If parents only knew how difficult it's been teaching post-pandemic to students who have missed two years of structured education. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and the liberties that they had at home, and they're really trying to bring those back into the classroom. So it's been definitely a very, very tough year. But um, they've shown they've but they shown, have shown support. solidarity with me. Like I think the uh, the quote was, "We stand with her." Okay, um, and it, it begs the question too: What about students, past students, current students? Like, have <laughs> they? Because I'm, I'm sure everyone's heard the tape. I'm sure everybody's aware of the situation. What has the opinion of the students? Um, been? Most of the students who I do have very close relationships with. Uh, have also called to check on me, like Miss Williams. You know that's not right. That's not how. That's not who you are. We love you. We know you're a good teacher. I've even had students who've graduated, and we're not talking about graduated last year. We're talking two, three, four years ago, who have contacted me to say, "Hey, are you okay?" I have one student who's in the military mm -hmm. on a boat right now. <laughs> that reached out. <laughs> that reached out to me. I'm like, you heard this story in the middle of the ocean. Wow. Okay. So it it sounds like overall, um, and for the most part, you've had the support of your former uh, students, some of your current students, definitely the teachers and everything. And so given, given where we are now, um, for those that are still in the teaching arena that, you know, will be enduring certain things like this, and even to those that um, are aspiring to be teachers and I know the temptation uh to answer the question would probably be hey don't do it but do it. what would you what would be your <laughs> advice to those that yet remain and to those that are thinking about coming into the educational arena um to the ones that are coming into the education arena I think um that you need to advocate your educational programs to educate you on situations like this, that there needs to be a definitive course for classroom management. There needs to be a definitive course on what to do when mm -hmm. um, 
you find yourself in one of these type of situations, what type of uh, protections do you have? What are the organizations out there that can represent you as a Definitely. teacher? Definitely. Um, what is the best course of actions if in the event something like this happened? Because I have to say that was not a part of my program when I was studying to become a teacher and I think it needs to be gotcha. and there definitely also needs to be um, a course on technology and how to combat it and how to use it effectively mm. but as uh, as well as like digital citizenship um, mm. the effects that technology can have on right. students and teachers gotcha 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 oh. and, Oh, cool. Uh, in terms of veteran teachers, I just think um, those teachers who have 20, 30 years in the field, it's because they just come from a different, uh, what's the word I'm looking Generation? For? Yeah, maybe. they just come from like, a generation. They approach teaching very differently. From, yeah, uh, they yeah, found yeah. a way to like disassociate, <laughs> I guess, yeah. because they've just been through it for so long. They've I still seen, know some of my teachers like that, too. Yeah. It's so funny you said that because they they do seem to have like that stars and stripes kind of thing where they're like, you know, I'll save as many as I can do all that I can for the ones that really want the education, yeah. but for the ones that don't, you know, they've hit the pocket now where they're like, when you make a personal choice, then that is, yeah, that is what it is. So. Found a way to just detach themselves from it. And, and it's not to say that they don't care. They do. Right, right, right. They just, they've learned to separate their professional career from their personal identity and, being even though I've been a teacher since 2015 I have yet to learn that skill <laughs> gotcha 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 um so last but not least like next steps for you like what are you thinking and and it's okay if you can't discuss with um everything that's going on but what are um what are you thinking do you see do you see a return to the classroom after this is over with or what sadly no you don't see a return. No. Okay. Why? Um, and I think I, I, I think you've kind of inferred the answer to this question, but why? Why not? Um. Of course, like I, you know, my reputation. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Of course, I don't trust students anymore. I don't want to go in a classroom walking on eggshells because like, oh my God, I might be recorded again. Let right, me right, not. Right. And nobody can be the best teacher they can be if they're constantly analyzing every situation true. for Very the true. worst outcome. Very true. But also, um, unfortunately, in the society we live in, it only takes one mistake to outweigh a lifetime of good. Yeah, that's and, true. And um, I didn't want to try to move up the educational ladder and become a principal I even had aspirations of becoming a superintendent one day but the reason why I I'm choosing to leave the profession is because if I were to apply for those positions and to keep going uh future employers would not see how I implemented a flipped classroom how I've done professional development for other mm -hmm. teachers to teach them how to use technology effectively in the classroom, how I've created my own curriculum, how I have um, just done so many things and pioneered so many things in my school. All of that will be outweighed. And I would spend most of that interview explaining this one situation and trying to convince them, oh, it won't happen again, rather than harping on my accolades. I would have to spend the rest of my career defending myself. Well, it's it's a shame, truly, to lose out um, on a teacher such as yourself. And it's just in my opinion, because the the court of public opinions is always very interesting. But in my opinion, it's it's it would be a shame um, to lose that. But I definitely understand the the reasons this strikes me as um as with any other corporate arena where you have a right to work in a safe and secured environment mm -hmm. and when the security of that environment has been breached um in any way then no one um without that confidence no one can operate at their peak and they don't want 
everything that they do or every move that they make to be called into question yeah. over um over one incident. And so I, I hate to hear it. I'm sure that there are many <laughs> that hate to hear it, but given um given all that you're that that you've done, given all of your credentials, given your continued studies, things of that nature, um, I do not see this as being the end of the road oh, for no, you no, in no, no way, shape, form or fashion. In fact, um you know, I just just listening to everything that's um, that you've said about who you uh, one what you can do, but more importantly, who you are. I think it speaks to um, your professionalism and your personal character to be able to say, "Hey, I did make a mistake. It wasn't my best day, it, but I do feel like I I still deserve my just due and the opportunities that I was always reaching for." Yeah, that's and that's all I was asking for throughout this whole. Um, ordeal. And again, I don't want to make it seem like my district and my administrators wasn't on my side. They were. Yeah. Um, yeah. My whole uh, concern is it seems like parents and teachers are on opposite sides when we should be working together. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I don't know. Like, I, I just wanted to give the opportunity to let you speak your piece. I think it's been very educational for myself. Um, you're welcome. It's, it's been very educational for myself. Um, you know, and, and it, it speaks a lot to, um, you know, the state of play of our educational system. Um, you know, it exposes a lot of the gaps between, um, parents and teachers, um, that, that need to be addressed. Um, it, it really points to, uh, what I see as a very viable opportunity Mm -hmm. to fix things like this in the best way. And so, I um I hope to see you on the forefront still <laughs> um in whatever way um that you choose um I I think also that I'll probably try to pull a few more guests because I, I think it should be talked about I think we should at yes. least have the discussion like I I I used to um hear something from the elders all the time where they said um I'm not asking you to arrive I'm just asking you to leave where you are. Like I'm not asking Ooh. you to arrive at the at the destination, but let's let's get started on the journey. <laughs> yeah. And I think that um, this is one of those opportunities where if we can really get a serious conversation about this uh, going on and with the right folks, then perhaps we'll be able to um, affect some change. So. Thanks again um, for giving your side of it. You are always welcome here. After the um, investigation is over with, um, I'd love to uh, for you to come back, see what Absolutely. you've been up to Absolutely. and what you'll be doing. Um, I want to take the time as well to thank the audience for listening. Um, I don't know who out there will get this, but um, I, I'm very, very grateful to um, give the voiceless a voice when things like this um, go on. So thank you guys for listening as well. Um, I'm sure that there might be another part to this. <laughs> yeah. and then we can strip off the cover of who this actually is and everything. Uh, but until that time comes, uh, thank you guys for listening.